goes, not just your word, but your actions, how you think when you pray. He deserves our total praise. Thank you, God.
This is the day that the Lord has made. He was so kind to us. He allowed us to be able to rejoice in it. Amen. For the Lord truly in his holy temple. And all the earth keeps silent before him. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the tents with the wicked. Amen. We honor our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. To Reverend Covington. To the deacon, the trustees. To our musicians. To the audio video team. To our ushers. Amen. To my wife in her absence. Amen. To each one of you, my father's children. Amen. And happy Mother's Day to uh, the mothers out there. Amen. We certainly thank you for all that you do. Amen. Come on and get the Lord another hand clap of praise. Uh, before we get into the word, um, give me a few moments, a few minutes for a pastoral brief for some announcements. Um, following morning worship service we will have our mother's day tribute program so please if you would please stick around for that and you know again we allow you up to five minutes to pay tribute to your mother uh, whether um, she's living or whether she's in heaven amen and you can make your presentations at that time also after the program um, uh, is it the richardson girls or the richardson family Richardson girls will uh, ask that all mothers will make their way to the fellowship hall. Um, they have something for you there. Amen. So after Mother's Day tribute program, please go to the fellowship hall and the Richardson girls um, have something for you mothers. To God be the glory. Um, any visitors, any visitors with us, please stand. We have any visitors today. Let us ask you to stand. You may be recognized. Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Thank you for your presence. We thank you for uh, coming and worshiping with us on today. Um, next Saturday, which is, if I'm not mistaken, the 14th, the 14th, um, I would like, the pastor would like to meet with all uh, the young adults between the age of 17 and 28. If you're between the age of 17 and 28, at the hour 11 o'clock Saturday morning, I need to meet with you here. Um, there's some things I need to uh, talk with you about and discuss with you. So please, if you would, uh, put it on your calendar, young adults, 17 through 28. Uh, if you could put it on your calendar at 11 o'clock to meet with me on next Saturday. Amen? Amen. Um, please don't forget to fulfill your obligations to give your tithes and your offerings. Um, you can give your leave your tithe and offerings here at the, at the audio video podium or if you know you want to you can go to cedar grove st paul's.org and you may give your offers and tithes there at give of five paypal or cash app amen you can forgive your tithe and your offers there for the lord loves what a cheerful giver amen bless the lord as he is so bless you amen amen do you love the lord today don't fool me now. Do you love the Lord today? Amen. Those of you who have your Bibles, Mark chapter 9. I would that you have your Bible or Bible devices so you can look along, go along, read along with me so you can read it for yourself. Amen. Those of you, if you don't have a Bible or Bible devices, I'm sure it's on the monitor for your reading as well. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. You have it, say amen. And that verse there says, And Jesus said to him, If you can, all things are possible for one who believes. If you can, all things are possible for one who believes. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this Mother's Day. We thank you, Father, to allow us to come to celebrate these mothers on today. We pray, Father, that you would bless them even the more. Now, fathers, I stand behind this sacred desk. I pray that you anoint me from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. I may preach a gospel season with your Holy Ghost. Hide me behind the cross and let the blood of Jesus prevail. Lord, you said if I'd go, you go with me. Open my mouth and you speak for me. You find me now out here on your word. Consecrate me now for thy service divine. Let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be accepted in thy sight, for you are my strength and you are my redeemer. Satan, take your hands off of God's property. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And Jesus said to him, if you can, all things are possible for one who believes. Want to speak 
from the top today. Mothers, believe in yourself. His topic, his message is geared toward the mothers, but others may glean from this message. Mothers, believe in yourself. Some years ago, Michael Jackson and Diana Ross, they starred in a movie called The Wiz. Y'all remember that movie? It was the soul version of the Judy Garland classic, The Wizard of Oz. One of the most challenging selections in that colorful screenplay was given by Lena Horne, who played the good witch. And she sang this song called Believe in Yourself. Mm -hmm. Y'all remember that? The statement of the song was, uh, the, the statement the song made was lasting that success in life comes only if you believe in yourself. Y'all gonna pray with me? Y'all gonna pray for me? Webster's Dictionary describes believing in yourself as confidence. Confidence is crucial. It's a crucial element in the formula for success. Without it, failure glooms on the horizon. Young mothers stepping out on their own for the first time are encouraged to be strong and give God first place in their lives. And he will help you step forward to your uh, varied futures confident in your own abilities. Mothers on the side of my voice and mothers, you who out there in uh, social media land, uh, to be confident is to be sure, unwavering, undoubting. But to be sure, that must be an assurance. Uh, come on, somebody. When Moses was told by God at the burning bush to go and stand before Pharaoh and demand freedom of the enslaved Israelites, Moses was unsure of himself. He began to make excuses and, and think up reasons why he couldn't carry out this mission. He complained about not being able to speak well and wondered by what authority could he tell Pharaoh that he spoke. Moses, Moses, one of the greatest biblical leaders of all times, whose courage and vision had been harrowed by millions, was unsure of himself. God placed in his hand a small rod and told him to go forward and use what was in his hand to carry out his mission. Do I have a witness in here? Mothers have a question for you today. Mothers, what is it that God has put in your hand? Can, can I preach this thing? Well, we know, Deacon, Deacon, uh, 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 Deacon Ray, we know that by being a mother, he's, he has given them the responsibility, duties of birthing and raising a child or children. So as a mother, in your hand is the greatest gift God could ever give anyone. And you ought to care wisely and lovingly for that gift. The Bible says in, in Proverbs 22 and 6, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. Mothers, what is it that God has put in your hand? Has he given you leadership skills to, to use on your upward climb? If so, don't squander them by failing to use them, but refine them through study and application. Has he given you a, a fiery personality and an ambitious spirit? If so, it's a great gift. If you, if you learn to control it and not let it get out of control, Mothers, what is in your hand? Is it an a, a aptitude for business? If so, it's a great gift that you can, that would, that you can, that can, can, can carry you a long way. If you remember that your primary business is to be a servant of the Lord. Has he given you uh, the beauty of a, a personal appearance, a special charm, a disarming smile, and a compelling personality? If so, it's a great gift. But if you remember that true beauty is not determined by what your hairdresser does or, or what you see in the mirror, but true beauty is determined by the picture that reflects your heart. Oh, I'm going to close it because y'all don't like this. Moses stepped before Pharaoh with his hand wrapped tightly around the rod that God had given him. 
He was confident. He was sure. The challenge today is to discover the nature, discover the nature uh, of the rod God has put in your hand and use it with confidence. Moses used his rod to challenge the powers of, the, uh, of Egypt. But Moses also misused his rod and provided water for the people without giving God credit and for it he was punished. So be careful how you use your rod. The little rods of talent, precision of thought, and the fire of the spirit that God had placed in your hands, mothers, will help you fight off the enemies. Roll back waters of, confu of, of opposition and put bread on the table. But always remember that whatever you accomplish in life did not come from the rod. Help me if you will. But the force of God behind the rod. Can I preach this thing? Always give him first place in your life. Mothers, you're going forward in dangerous times. And many of you know and have experience. If ever there's a need for confidence and assurance of conviction, it is now. Uh, these are the times when the threat of life climbs and property loom greater than ever before. These are the times when dreams are deferred and they dry up in the sun like a raisin. These are the times when uh, warm, refreshing ideas are frozen by the chilling breath of apathy and prim uh, uh, premonition. My Christian friends, how many know we're living in some troubled times? I heard the songwriter declare, in times like these, we need a savior. In times like these, we need an anchor. Can I get a witness out there? Secondly, we must note that while belief in yourself is based on confidence, true confidence is based on the belief not in yourself, but in an almighty God. There are companies in the world today that have made millions circumventing globe teaching people how to be confident. Companies have established courses to teach, teach prospective corporate executive and others the trick to self-confidence with a barrage of clever, or cute clever phrases, promotional CDs and, and the image building success, a session, they try to give each participant a measure of self-confidence. But true self-confidence come from our knowledge that behind us stands an almighty God. And almighty God has all power. Come on, somebody. When we look at this text verse, this verse from Mark, it, Mark emphasizes this point by noting that Jesus' disciples had failed while trying to heal a man who was filled with devils. Although, Sister Rosia, although they prayed the right prayer and they did all the right things, the man was not healed and they were troubled by their lack of power. Jesus responded to them. He responded to them that well, they were unable to perform as they should because they did not believe that Jesus would empower them. Look at what Jesus said. You didn't believe that I would hear and answer your prayer. You didn't believe that I would back up your prayer request. Even though you went through the motions, you didn't believe and because you couldn't believe it, you couldn't achieve it. Come on, somebody. Well, I got to close and get y'all out of here. But there's a poet. There was a poet and, a, and an artist. Sister Jordan, there was a, a, poet, a poet and an artist who was examining a painting represent the healing of the two blind men at Jericho. The artist asked, what seems to you the most remarkable thing in this painting? The poet said, everything is very clear. The groupings of the individuals and the expressions upon the face and so on and so on. The artist found the most significant touch elsewhere. He pointed to the steps of a house in the corner of the picture. He said, do you see that discarded cane lying over there? The poet said, yes, but what does that signify? 
Can I close it like I feel it? The blind man who has rushed to Jesus is so sure that he will be healed. He said he was so sure that he will be healed that he left his cane behind. Church, uh, we would need more if we would rush to Jesus, leaving things behind with confidence, knowing that he would take care of our case. But too often we hold on to canes and crutches of our own devising instead of looking only to Jesus. Where well, the Bible says he is the author and the finisher of our faith. Come on, somebody. Mothers out there, I stop by to encourage you to believe in yourself. And in order to believe in yourself, you must be sure of yourself. But more importantly, more importantly, true confidence is based on your belief in an almighty God. Anybody out there, you know that you know you know. When you put your trust in Jesus, he will, he will provide for you. Any mother out there know when you were down and out and you looked up to Jesus, which come with your help, he picked you up, turned you around, placed your feet on solid ground. Anybody out there, when you were going through, thought you couldn't have a child. But Jesus stepped in, made a way out of no way. And anybody out there, when your child was sick on the sick bed, you fell down on your knees and you begin to pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, I need your help. My child is sick. The doctor said this and the doctor said that. But Father, I'm depending on you because you're God with all power. All power. Father, I'm standing on your word. Father, I'm just like that woman with an issue of blood. If I could just touch the hem of your garment. If I could just touch the hem of your garment. Because last year, Sister Robin, you touched the hem of his garment and you were made whole. I wish I had some mothers in here to know you know you know. If it had not been for the Lord who was on your side, where would you be? If it had not been for you calling on the name of Jesus. Well, I can't leave the grandmothers out. If it had not been for grandmother's prayer who prayed for you morning, noon, and night, where would you be? Grandmama prayed. Prayed earnestly, prayed fervently, prayed ambitiously, and Jesus, Jesus heard grandma's prayer. That's why you're able to stand here today. Had it not been for grandmama praying for you, praying for you, you'd probably be sleeping in your grave. But thank you, grandmama, for praying for me. I got the clothes. But my soul is on fire. Do I have any mothers in here that know the word of prayer? Not only do you know the word of prayer, but you can praise him in the morning. You can praise him in the noonday. You can praise him in the midnight hour. You can praise him when you don't feel like it. You can praise him when your body is racking with pain. Do I have any mothers to say thank you, Lord? Thank you, Jesus, for your presence in my life. Mothers, believe in yourself. Because I'm sure there are times when we as men don't understand. Don't understand what you go through. Don't understand what you're facing day for day. You keep home. Go to work. Come back home. Take care of home. Wash the clothes. Wash the dishes. And then on top of that, you have to take care of us. And it's all by the power and the grace of God that he gives you the strength. That he gives you the motivation. 
I got the clothes, but my soul is on fire. Men, we can't take for granted all that they do. Men, we can't take for granted all they do for us. Take care of us, and then on top of that, take care of the child or the children. And how many of you know when they get 18, that don't mean that they're grown? Parenting is for eternity. And Deacon asked the question this morning, how long is eternity deep? It's a long time. So it doesn't matter if they're 10, 18, 34, 35. They still have to call on mom. Can I get a witness in here? They still have to call on mom. So mothers, it's your day. You are to be celebrated on this day. And to God be the glory for you, you, and you. Come on and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. There may be someone here that don't know the Lord a part of their sins. And today, not only you as an individual did God give your mother the greatest gift by giving you 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 can receive the greatest gift by giving you back to him by giving your life to him by accepting him as your Lord and Savior and you can receive a gift so gifts are already paid for Jesus paid it all 2,000 years ago when he died on the cross. And what greater gift to make your mother proud to see her child on this day give their life to Christ. I'm sure there's not any gift in J.C. Penney, Belts, Macy's, or any other department store that you can go by your mother that would make her happy and she want her watch you and witness you give your life to Christ. Am I right about it? So the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus died and on the third day God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And then at that moment you receive the gift of salvation. And you can imagine how your mother's heart flutters with joy. But there be one today like to come. Take it up by letter, Christian experience, can for baptism. Yes, it was grandmama's prayers and your mother's prayers that has kept you so far. But grandma and mother's prayers can only keep you for so long. Deacon Roger talked about this morning how we're looking forward to that day where we will dwell with him forever. He taught how this earthen tabernacle will dissolve, but we'll receive, if you're saved, another building not made by man's hands. He talked about how that day we'll take on celestial bodies. You see, these bodies of flesh and bones will dissolve. These bodies of flesh will go back to which it's come. But your soul, if you're saved, will go be with Jesus. Will go be with the Father. How long, Deke? Forever. And ever is a long time. So I wouldn't leave here unsure of myself where I'm going to spend eternity. Because I cannot guarantee you much. But it's one thing I can guarantee you. You're going to leave this place. This earthen tabernacle will dissolve and your soul is going to go to one or two places. That's heaven or hell. And Deacon Ray, you're not going to miss both of them. You're not going to miss both of them. You're going to end up in one of them. Give you a moment to make, make that decision.
what will it be? Heaven or hell? Heaven or hell? One last time. Heaven or hell? Because one of two things he's going to say for you, to you. Come on in and enjoy, enjoy the Lord. Or he's going to say, depart from me. Ye workers of iniquity, I know you not. And that means you're not going to miss both of them. So, Jonas, it's not prayer time. Don't you desire prayer right where you are. You know what you want to lay at his feet. You know what you want to lay at the altar. Give it to God. Turn it over to him. Every head bow. Every eye close. Precious God, our Savior, our Father, the giver of every good and perfect gift, that God continue to look high, sit high, but yet you continue to look low. Father, we thank you for these mothers that are gathered here today. We thank you, Father, for their diligence. We thank you for their compassion for being a mother and their compassion for their children. Father, we continue to pray for them, that you continue to lift them up, continue to enlighten them, continue to inspire them, continue to motivate them. Father, continue to build a hedge of protection around them. Thank you for them. Now, Father, there are other things that have been placed at the altar and placed at your feet. We pray, Father, you'd be so kind to look down upon these things, taking consideration of what they're praying for, what they're praying over. You know their mind. You know their mindset. Look down upon them. In your own God-like way, be attentive to their situations. Be attentive to their circumstance. Be attentive to all this, uh, that they are asking you for. And Father, we're going to praise you. Give you honor and glory for it belongs to thine. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us look to the Lord for the benediction. Father, we come and done as thou command, but yet we find there's still room. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with thee, thy people now henceforth, even unto evermore. And the saints of God said, Amen. 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 You may be seated.